Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the GM Surgery. Forgive me if you see me doing this a lot with my hair. Um, I recently washed it and so it's now trying to just fall in front of my face at every given opportunity. Um, this here, what we have, is a game from Darth Wolf, who's a Patreon supporter of mine. Um, he's been having some issues. Um, I asked if maybe he'd let me look at it for GM Surgery. He said fine. Um, so we're going to see if we can't fix uh, the, the issues he's having. He's, he's working on the complete platformer tutorial. Again, handy. I, I know the code reasonably well. <laughs> um, so let's first of all just run the game and see what issues he's having. Um, you have to look right away at the transition that appears here. You might have noticed that the, the black uh, rectangle transition didn't cover the correct area of the screen. Also, the menu is in kind of the wrong spot as well. Um, we expect that to be in the bottom right corner. Um, the thing that gave this away to me as not being intentional is that it's like new game, it slides off there as opposed to like sliding off the screen. Um, and that's also a little bit of a clue as to what the problem is. So uh, let's, let's see if you can work out what was going wrong um, uh, before this video even finishes. Um, so you'll notice there as well when we die we get two transitions coming up. Uh, we get one that's actually the correct size um, and one that's the incorrect size. Um, in, in, in the top left there. So that's another problem. We've got multiple transitions going off at once. Uh, if I press R and restart the game, um, you'll notice that we come back to here and it's actually fixed now. For, like from this point, you can see the menu is in the right place all of a sudden. Um, we've gotten stuck at 30 FPS, but I think that was an issue with the, the death happening there. Um, but you see the transitions are now fine once it's reset. So that's another clue as to what might be going wrong as well. Um, the first thing we want to take a look at um, when we run into issues like these is we can see that there's a duplicate um, object issue or very very likely it's very likely that you've got multiple transition objects um, existing when they shouldn't just because of how our transition works in order for it to draw multiple sets of boxes like that there must be multiple instances of the transition object um, so to remind myself how it works uh, we'll go to the slide transition script and you can see it works with a with o transition um, that implies that there's only meant to be one transition object at any given time. It'll click on no transition come to this object and we can see it is persistent. Um, it's a persistent object means that it's probably created once at the start of the game and we don't want to ever make another one of it. So that implies that the, the problem is very very likely to be that you've just placed multiple copies of O transition um, into your game world when you shouldn't. Okay. Um, if we go to rooms, go to room menu, uh, we can see on instances we've got a copy of O transition just chilling over here, um, which is where we want it, and we don't want it to appear anywhere else. However, we come to room one, and transition layer, we can see we've got, predictably enough, a copy of O transition. So if we delete that and go through every level, because we don't want there to ever be uh, multiple copies of this object. We don't have any in room ending, that's good. Um, now if we run the game, we should see that we don't have that duplication issue anymore. Very important to chase down duplication issue first. Um, if you spot one, because they can be quite hard to spot. Um, if we had fixed the other issue and made the transition just work correctly, we might it might not have been possible for us to even notice that there was a problem with multiple transition objects uh, being a thing. So if I press R now, you can see only one of those comes up, the wrong one, um, and then brings us back to here. We don't have those two uh, transitions going off at once. Um, is important, as I say, if you if you do spot an issue with multiple instances, do fix that first, because otherwise if you fix the other issue, it might obscure it, and you might forget that it's a problem, um, and it might cause really weird, unpredictable things later on in your game. Um, in Pokey Poke, I regularly have the issue where I place like two of the player uh, in a room by mistake, um, and everything can seem normal uh, until it's not. Right, it can cause all kinds of problems and it can take me a while to even notice that that's why the problem is occurring. So always fix those really quickly if you, if the stars align in such a way that you notice them. Okay, um, in order to fix an issue like that, um, you first of all check if the object is persistent and whether or not it should be, which will tell you, you know, whether or not that object is, uh, instances of that object are carrying over from one room to the next. It could be that it's not meant to be persistent and it is, so you're getting multiple of them where they shouldn't be. Um, or it could be that it is persistent, um, but you've accidentally placed 
um, extra copies of that instance, um, either in the initial room or somewhere else, or you've created it dynamically via code. If it is a dynamically created object, and that's what you're relying on to create it, uh, check your process for creating it, maybe add in a safety check, like writing a if not instance exists or whatever. I'll just write that real quick, um, just somewhere. So you write an if uh, not instance exists uh, or whatever, uh, and then instance create and, or whatever it is uh, you want, okay? So you write a line like this, wherever it is you want to create your thing, and then that will make sure that um, it's only going to run that line of code if we don't already have one of those objects, all right? And that will help you make sure you don't run into um, having extra copies of objects that you don't want to have extra copies of. Now, for the transition issue itself, um, the first thing to notice about the transition and the problem that you're having um, is that they look proportionally correct, right? Like that's that looks correct other than the fact that it's the wrong size. So that means that your maths and your process, your step event and all that kind of stuff is all probably fine. Um, and it's just the initial numbers uh, that you're using that are wrong. Um, so where are we getting those numbers from? First thing to check would be like your room sizes and so on. Um, you know, your room size here is 2048768. It's like kind of wider than the screen, but that's fine. And your resolution that from how the game starts is going to be 1366 by 768 because that's what your viewport and your camera are set to. And that's fine. They are the same. Um, so that's okay. So the other clue that we had here was that um, the transitions were getting fixed when we restarted the game and the problem existed uh, when we first launch it. So that gives us a clue as to kind of where the numbers might be going wrong and uh, where, um, where, how we might fix it. Um, so I think the, the best thing to do, I mean, I know what to do because I've already looked at it, but I, at the time as well, what I did and what I'm going to do now is come to O game because we know that this is an object that gets made at the very start of the game and might do some things with our GUI or our surfaces that might change our sizes and therefore cause the transition object to get confused in some way. And we see right away when I come into here, um, pretty much the cause of the whole problem. Uh, we've got an interesting comment up here that this is the code for full screen GUI if needed, where you've done macro res w uh, 1920 by 1080 and set the GUI size to be that. Part of my series covers doing something like this where we set these figures to whatever our intended game's resolution is um, so that when, uh, and, and then we set the GUI size to be that so that if we ever swap to full screen, the GUI doesn't automatically resize to match the size of the window because then that will mean all of our GUI elements become out of place or differently sized from the game resolution. We want them to be the same. Now, funnily enough, I discovered uh, that you don't actually have to do this anymore. Um, so that part of my tutorial is like semi-redundant um, in newer versions of Game Maker. I would still do it um, because uh, I was talking about this on Twitter and Pixelated Pope made a good point that like uh, this is a behavior that sometimes sort of changed back and forth over Game Maker's history. And there's probably like, the, 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 it's not so much that there's a reason to believe it'll ever change back, but it may well change back one day and there's no harm in being explicit about setting um, your GUI size to be your resolution. The problem here is you haven't set it to your resolution, you've set it to a resolution that's bigger than that. Um, in theory, I, I'm guessing you set this to a figure that you expected to be your full screen resolution, um, but for one we don't know what a full screen resolution will be, uh, you're just sort of guessing at a common popular figure, but even my full screen resolution is bigger than that. Um, but that's also just not the purpose of the code. We don't set this to our full screen resolution. We set this to the resolution of the game. The resolution of your game is 1366 by 768. Okay, that's the, the camera space that you're working with. So we set this to 1366 uh, by 768. And you'll see that this basically fixes the issue. Um, Ta-da! Uh, transitions are correct. The menu is now in the correct place. We go to new game and um and everything's everything's fine but we might still be wondering well why did it do that thing where it was like fixing it when we restart the game we don't need to know that now but it's helpful to understand where this issue came from um if you look at the instance creation order you'll notice that o transition actually gets made before o game uh in the room and in o transition um not the instance let's go to the object in the create event you get the gui width and gui height 
And so that's going to get made first, and the GUI width and GUI height is going to be 136 by 768 initially. Um, so that's the figures it's going to use. But then when our game gets created, we set uh, GUI size to be one by to, to be 1080p, right? The numbers you had before. So this was using numbers that were smaller than 1080p on a 1080p GUI, therefore drawing the transition in like a smaller rectangle on the top left, and that's what was actually causing um, the issue there. So debugging tips that we can learn from this are, first of all, it's very easy to get confused um, when dealing with GUI sizes, window sizes, display sizes, surface sizes. Uh, so first of all, just don't beat yourself up if you run into an issue like this. It's extremely common. I run into things like this all the time. Um, second of all, check your numbers that you're plugging in. Make sure they're consistent with what your resolution might be. And, and so on, okay? Just, just make sure that your initial numbers are correct. And you can tell if that's going to be a problem because you'll see that um, the boxes and the transitions and stuff are in the right size, right proportion, but they're just, uh, sorry, they're the right size, but they're the wrong, um, no, they're the wrong size, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and they're the, but they're the, 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 the wrong size, but they're the right proportions and the right process was happening. So if you can see that, you know it's going to be a problem with just the numbers that you plugged in um, and that all your other code is fine. Um, third of all, don't guess at full screen resolutions. Don't assume that everyone's full screen resolution is going to be 1080p. Try not to even do that early on. I know it's like tempting. It's like, well, my resolution 1080 I'll stick with that for now. Just do the work ahead of time and do uh, display, get width, or whatever to get the full screen size. Not that the code you were doing here was right for that, but if and when you want to guess at full screen stuff, you want to get the full screen um, sizes for anything in particular, don't guess. Use functions to get them. And last of all, just check the order in which things are happening, okay? Uh, instance creation order matters, as we can see here, um, and it can mean that you get numbers uh, that in one thing here by, by doing a code like this in your create event that immediately get updated or corrected to something else by an object that gets created literally two objects later, right? It can cause problems. Uh, instance creation order causes a lot of weird tricky issues that can be sometimes difficult to spot when you think you understand the order in which things are happening, um, but actually maybe it's um, doing something in ways you aren't expecting. So always check that um, things are happening in the correct order. Okay, that's how you fix that. I hope this was useful to you all. Um, thank you, Darth Wolf, for letting me take a look at this. hope it was useful to you as well. Um, if you did find this useful or you want me to make more of it, remember liking, subscribing, all those cool things people do on YouTube when they like content, please, please do them. It's very helpful. If you really, really like what I do, I've also got Patreon and, you know, all that jazz. Do the things, you know. It, I, I have to say it, right? There's, there's a man, he has a gun. If I don't say it, he'll do the things. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. A huge shout out to the following Patreon supporters. JDoom986, Darth Wolf, Jake Rumsey, Raymond Harvey, Tranquil, Havig, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Julian Cropley, Michael Kolich, John Kenai, Stephen Chenier, Borgia MK Ultra, It's Matt Poor, Rachel Stewart, Arctix, Feral Princess, John C, Team D, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacant, Pong Pong Zhao, Jason Welch, Andrew Gilbert, Reva, Kaiser Ho, Boris the Wizard, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Yoram Pater, Leo, Scott Matthews, Samir and Yai Legaglo, Rene Dam, Rupinda, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, Seanathan, Basil the Dog, and Max M. If you want to support the work I do, a link to my Patreon is in the description.